Hi and welcome to this week's Sabbath School lesson. We're in a new quarter. The beginning lesson is the blessing of hospitality. And as we consider this lesson, the introduction tells us the Bible lays much stress upon the practice of hospitality. And as um, I looked at this lesson, I thought, wow, it is extremely important because hospitality hinges upon a spirit that we have. If we neglect hospitality, it can be a result of actually an evil spirit. And we'll see the, um, this result in the lesson as, as it goes to the behavior of the disciples. And, and Christ says, what sort of, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of in the, in the way of relating to people in a negative way. And so, uh, but on the other hand, hospitality, the practice of hospitality... Um, is is painted a, a a beautiful picture is painted in the lesson, especially through Abraham and Lot and what they did and the blessing they actually gained from giving a blessing, even though they gave a blessing, not expecting a blessing, it was just an outflow of genuine hospitality that was bestowed, was shown by the patriarchs in this lesson. So just beginning this lesson with question one, we see a context of Christ as he's going to Jerusalem. This is before he gets to Samaria, to the village in Samaria. And the question one reveals to us that Christ was having a trial. There was, a, there was an experience that was difficult. Um, it says, To the heart of Christ, it was a bitter task to press his way against the fears, disappointment and unbelief of his beloved disciples. It was hard to lead them forward to the anguish and despair that awaited them at Jerusalem. And Satan was at hand to press his temptations upon the Son of Man. So this is the context that, that is behind Jesus coming. And he's, he ha, he's got these trials and, and this difficulty that's weighing him down. And as he goes, he sends a message, according to question two, to the Samaritan village. And he's simply wanting refreshment. It says there in question two, in the note under question two, Upon one occasion Christ sent messengers before him unto a village of the Samaritans, requesting the people to prepare refreshments for him and his disciples. So here is a person, our Lord, who has, has difficulty, is having trials and temptations, uh, finding it a hard thing to actually go to Jerusalem, and he's just simply wanting a refreshment. And isn't it the case that when someone comes to us, do we really know how, how much trials they are going through? Do we know what a, co a cup of cold water would do to someone who, who f as far as we're concerned, is a stranger, um, if they're discouraged? So here Christ is discouraged, yet in his discouragement, the Samaritans don't just reject him, but they heap upon him... Uh, more ammunition that the devil could use against him uh, as, a temp as, a, as a further temptation, which Christ never yielded to, but it only, th this behavior only adds a burden to a burden, the rejection of hospitality. He was seeking refreshments. What sort of refreshments are, is, a, is appropriate for someone who comes to us? Well, Abraham gives this, he gives the refreshments in question uh, four. The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. And it goes on to say that Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood before him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. So here shows an eagerness, a willingness for hospitality. True hospitality has to be a willingness. If, if we grudgingly do it, the atmosphere is felt by the person. It has to be a genuine, willing service that we want to perform. And here Abraham just runs to meet them and he, bows, um, he bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, now if I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water... I pray you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under a tree 
and I'll fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you, ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, and therefore ye, and therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. So what preparation does Abraham put forward here as, as, a, as an example, a godly example of what true hospitality is? A willingness to provide water, a, a beverage to the person, some refreshing in those days, the feet were, uh, with their sandals, they got a lot of dirt into their feet and to have your feet washed was um, was really refreshing. And so, while ever we don't practice this very much as a way of hospitality in our culture, um, things like a, a warm face washer that to w- wash someone's face if they've, or just something to freshen up a little bit. I, I mean, when you travel on the airlines, they they seem to be good at doing those sort of things. They, uh, different airlines that I've travelled on, they give you a pair of socks to put on, or they give you a warm face washer to wash your face, and you just feel so much nicer once they do that. These are the things that um, that the Bible indicates to us is what uh, godly hospitality would be where you give some refreshment and then rest yourselves under a tree, providing them a place of comfort where they can sit down and rest themselves um, in a comfortable position and also providing some food. And that was what Abraham suggested to, to the Lord. And the Lord said, do that. What, what does that tell us about hospitality? The Lord is happy for such action to be performed. And if we perform it to Jesus... Uh, but don't perform it to his followers, then we're defeating the point. If we want to serve the Lord, we'd even do it to the least of, of the brethren, the people that we naturally don't like. And then Lot also does the same thing. He, 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 the angels come into Sodom in the next verse in under question four, but he adds another dimension. He says, I wash your feet, but stay a night. And so providing a place to sleep is also part of hospitality. If someone is needing a place to sleep, let them sleep. Give them some food. Give them something refreshing. Give, let them freshen up, whether take a shower or whatever it is. All these things should be the common practice amongst God's people. And so these privileges were repaid by greater blessings. What blessing did Lot receive by receiving the angels into his home? Well, Lot actually, his life was saved over his act of hospitality. Abraham received a blessing with communing with the Lord and, and, and pleading with him in relation to Lot and the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so there is a blessing. And when Jesus came to the Samaritan village, who really lost out? Yes, Jesus didn't get his refreshment that he, want, that he was looking for, but he was actually looking for this as an avenue to be able to bless them. So they were actually shortchanging themselves without even knowing it. It says here, the people refused to receive Jesus in in this village because he was on his way to Jerusalem. They interpreted as meaning that Christ showed a preference for the Jews whom they hated with intense bitterness. Had he come to restore the temple and worship upon Mount Gerizim, they would gladly have received him. But he was going to Jerusalem and they would show him no hospitality. Little did they realize that they were turning from their doors the best gift of heaven. Jesus invited men to receive him. He asked favors at their hands that he might come near to them to bestow the richest blessings. For every favor manifested towards him, he requested requited a more precious grace but all was lost to the Samaritans because of their prejudice and bigotry wow so Jesus went and asked asks for favors actually requesting can I have somewhere to stay or can can you give me some refreshments like the woman at the well can I have some water and he actually didn't even end up getting his water but he was actually wanting to bless and so he, Christ's motive in requesting wasn't a selfish motive. It was to be able to come close to the individual, to be able to give a blessing. And so when we are 
are requested from somebody, we must, we must remember that the greatest blessing is really given to those who give. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Great measure, pressed down, and, and into your bosom shall men give to you. That's what Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount. And so prejudice and bigotry are really um, satanic traits that stifle genuine hospitality. Prejudice. What is prejudice? Prejudice is prejudice is where you you already hold someone in an unfavorable light even before you really get to know them. And and how many how much does that happen especially within religious circles? Look at the this was a the the Jews versus the Samaritans. It was always a contest of who is really God's church. Uh, we're God's church or you're God's church. And all this mentality of who is God's church actually just breeds prejudice and bigotry. Bigotry is where it's an intolerance to other people if they have a different belief or different creed or different opinion than yourself. And you just can't handle that. And so you want to avoid them. These prejudice and big bigotry are the satanic traits that stifle uh, uh, hospitality, genuine hospitality. And so we can see then in question five that there is a human reaction when there when hospitality isn't shown and and that is also has some satanic traits to it that if people don't um, receive me or so on and so on that there is um, that there is a, a human reaction to discourtesy as it says on above question five and we are familiar with the story that James and John were irritated. They, they were annoyed at the way the Samaritans treated Jesus. And in their annoyance, they wanted some punishment to be done because of what they had done. And what was Jesus' response? Jesus' response to them was, in question 7, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. So, the Samaritans had this prejudice and bigotry, which was a satanic trait that stifled hospitality. But the, the reaction of, of those satanic traits So these attitudes, bigotry, prejudice, was activated in the disciples, but it was also present within the Samaritans. So it made either, both of them no better than each other. And it says in question, um, question six that 
the reason why people didn't receive Jesus is because it says their own pride of heart, in question six, and their false conception of his character and mission would prevent them from honestly weighing the evidences of his messiahship. So the it, human pride gets in the way also, that I, I'm not going to uh, open myself up to, to uh, weigh the evidences from an unbiased way. That is what the Samaritans did, even the Jews themselves that rejected Christ and ultimately lost out on the blessing and so we can see this satanic traits are prejudice bigotry pride of heart and false conception the desire to hurt destroy or compel the conscience whereas these are all the attitudes these are the attitudes that prevent hospitality whereas true hospitality is a willingness shown by abraham to supply refreshments to make someone comfortable, to make someone at ease and to take the burden off people. Whatever is required to do that in a godly way is what hospitality really is. To make someone comfortable. Christ was having trials and he just sought refreshment. How many followers of him who are having trials, having difficulties, who are just seeking refreshment? Let us not turn away from, from, um, <clears throat> from people who are needing the refreshments of life that we can provide them as followers of Christ. So may the Lord bless you in your continuation of study of this lesson and may we all be truly hospitable to strangers and to God's people. In Jesus' name, amen.